Okay. Hello, and a very warm welcome to Strathlachlan Parish Church, deep in the lovely Argyll countryside near the village of Strachur and not far from beautiful Loch Fyne. My colleagues Jen, Lorna, Cathy and I look forward to sharing this act of worship with you. Look to the Lord and be strong at all times. Seek his presence. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Let us worship God. We listen now as Cathy plays for us the hymn, Pray that Jerusalem may have peace and felicity. The words of the 122nd Psalm, and this hymn can be found at number 82 in CH4. The psalmist writes, Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. Let us all seek the way and the truth of God. Let us pray. Into the mix of humanity, with friends and neighbours, visitors and strangers, near and far, Together, we join to worship you, O God. Generous, hospitable God, who turns no one away, welcome each one of us now in this time of worship and virtual gathering and embrace us in your being. We are grateful, Lord God, that you love us and care for us, that Jesus lived and died for us. We are grateful that you are interested in us, even with all our faults and failings. Thank you for sharing our lives and our living, especially in these strange days, for being within our hopes and dreams. Thank you for giving us purpose and meaning. Thank you for showing us how to live lives of goodness and truth, lives of caring and sharing. Thank you for your generosity, even if we fail to see it. Thank you, God, for being you, and thank you for making each of us a special individual known and loved by you. We sometimes think that the more we have, the happier we will be. If only, then all will be well. We sometimes turn the other way, closing our eyes and ears, ignoring what we see choosing to neglect those asking for help. Sometimes we refuse a helping hand to those in need. We want to do our thing instead. We do not want to confess these things, but Lord God, in this moment, in this space that we have been given, give us the desire to confess our feelings and sins. Renew us from within and set us free from all that shackles us. 
set us free to be the human beings you would have us be today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We turn now to scripture, to a reading from the Old Testament, to Psalm 25, reading the first nine verses. Lord my God, to you I lift my heart, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame, do not let my enemies exult over me. No one whose hope is in you is put to shame, but shame comes to all who break faith without cause. Make your paths known to me, Lord. Teach me your ways. Lead me by your faithfulness and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. In you I put my hope all day long. Remember, Lord, in your tender care and love unfailing, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins and offences of my youth, but remember me in your unfailing love, in accordance with your goodness, Lord. The Lord is good and upright, therefore he teaches sinners the way they should go. He guides the humble in right conduct and teaches them his way. Amen. Here ends the Old Testament lesson. And in the New Testament, from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2. Philippians, chapter 2, reading the first 13 verses. If then our common life in Christ yields anything to stir the heart, any consolation of love, any participation in the spirit, any warmth of affection or compassion, fill up my cup of happiness by thinking and feeling alike with the same love for one another and a common attitude of mind. Leave no room for selfish ambition and vanity, but humbly reckon others better than yourselves. Look to each other's interests and not merely to your own. Take to heart among yourselves what you find in Christ Jesus. He was in the form of God, yet he laid no claim to equality with God but made himself nothing, assuming the form of a slave, bearing the human likeness, sharing the human lot, he humbled himself and was obedient, even to the point of death, death on a cross. Therefore God raised him to the heights and bestowed on him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven, on earth, and in the depths, and every tongue acclaim, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So you too, my friends, must be obedient as always, even more now that I am absent than when I was with you. You must work out your own salvation in fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, inspiring both the will and the deed for his own chosen purpose. Amen. Here ends the epistle reading. Thanks be to God.
Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Matthew at chapter 21 and reading from the 23rd verse. When he, that is Jesus, entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Thanks be to God for these readings from his most holy word, and to his name be all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. I think it's probably true to say that relationships between fathers and sons are not always easy. Undoubtedly, many sons will look up to their dads, admire them, respect them, even boast about them to their school pals. But as sons grow older, they will develop minds and attitudes of their own. They may begin to kick against the traces, and often they will feel that even as they reach adulthood, they are still treated as wee boys by their parents. Now you can be forgiven if you think that I am speaking from personal experience, because I am. What I have no experience of though is having siblings, because I am an only child. And I use the term child very loosely. It follows, therefore, that I have absolutely no idea about competitiveness between brothers, about how two brothers might react differently to instructions from their father. What lies at the heart of the passage in Matthew's Gospel, which we read just a few minutes ago, is the question of authority. In the first part of the reading, the leaders of the temple, the, the high and mighty, if you like, throw questions at Jesus. To paraphrase their challenge, who do you think you are? Does that ring any bells with you or with me for that matter? Does it echo reactions we may have had ourselves from time to time? What gives you the right 
to tell me what to do. You're not my boss. You know the kind of thing. The authorities were questioning Jesus' right to cleanse the temple. And in addition, they may have been affronted that he did not disown the title Son of David. The chief priests and elders responsible for the operation of the temple saw their authority as coming from God. So in their eyes, it must have seemed reasonable, in their eyes, to question Jesus as to where he thought his authority came from. Jumping ahead just a little, in the closing passage of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. For the moment, however, had Jesus come out with such a statement, he would have given the authorities the kind of ammunition they wanted to bring him down. In fact, they were trying to entrap him. Instead, though, and as we read, he answered a question with a question. And in so doing, he posed a conundrum. And the chief priests and the elders could not come up with an answer. By way of follow-up, then, Jesus offers a parable. This is the story of the father who tells one of his sons to go and work in his vineyard. The son replies indignantly, I will not. But he subsequently changes his mind and goes off to work. The father then tells the other son to go to work. And the son complies, but then does nothing. We're not told the ages of the two brothers, but I think it would not be unreasonable for us to assume that they were teenagers or young men. When he had told the story, Jesus asked his listeners, which of the two did the will of his father? And not surprisingly, they answered the first. You know, there's a challenge for us too in this parable. I wonder if we can see something of ourselves in the word pictures. Do we see ourselves as the offspring who comes across as obedient, but then does nothing? Or do we see ourselves as the one who initially comes across as negative, but then gets on with the work? Which of the two are we? The parable contains a reversal of expectations, which must have come as something of a shock to the temple authorities. Jesus asserts that some people who have lived disreputable lives may enter the kingdom of heaven, while some who claim to respect and obey God, but in reality fail to do so, may not achieve life eternal. By way of illustration, Jesus accuses the chief priests and elders of failing to respect the teachings of his cousin John the Baptist. And even after seeing that people such as tax collectors and prostitutes believed in John, the leaders of the temple still did neither accept nor believe. When all is said and done, the parable is in itself a challenge. And I wonder if it's too much of a stretch to think that it reflects these words in Paul's letter to the Romans. I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. You see, what Jesus asks is this. How will we respond to the truth of the gospel? If we have doubts, will we change our mind and believe? Or will we pretend obedience only then to renege on our commitment? Fathers and sons, reactions against being told what to do, 
sometimes even in competition. Relationships change as sons grow older and find that they do not always agree with their father's views and attitudes. But at the same time, sons' respect for and belief in their fathers can develop and become richer too. After all, dads have a lot of life's experience to draw on and to share. After all, our dad is our dad. He looks out for us. He is our security, our safe haven from the buffetings of the world, particularly when we are growing up. We would not change him for the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dearest God, we bring to you today our prayers for the creation, though your world, your people and ourselves. We pray for families who are struggling with conflict between each other, brothers and sisters who do not get on with parents, parents struggling with rebellion. Show them how to trust, love and work with each other so that conflict and hardship relents and they can live in harmony. We pray for our country and the world struggling with pandemic and help us all to work towards removing this struggle, even though we seem to be going backwards. Show us that we can trust that we are being led through this with dignity and respect. We pray, pray for the peace of our country, of countries in turmoil and the governments trying to deal with that. Look after those most vulnerable and frightened. God who makes us with the earth God who gives us to the world, God with us in our struggles, hear our fear and, need, and needs, hold our hand as you walk beside us, advise, encourage and guide us. We pray for our churches, ministers and sessions as they try and work around guidelines to bring our church families back together into the new normal. Give them the strength to find a way. Heavenly God, help our congregations in the meantime get the most from the worship available and keep them all safe and feeling connected. God who made, makes us with the earth, God who gives us to the world, God with us in our struggles, hear our fears and needs, hold our hand as you walk beside us, advise, encourage and guide us. We bring to you our own worries, regrets and fears. Help us to know that you are there holding our hand and walking alongside so that we feel your strength, love and hope that all will be well. In our silence we think of those in our own thoughts and give them the knowledge that you are there with them. We pray for peace in all our hearts and the fuller joys with Christ in our lives. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Amen. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We listen now to Cathy, will she please? Hymn number 470, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Your presence has been a blessing.